It's time for the Geo Geeks, the segment where we bring a resident expert to nerd out on her favorite topic. And today, our enterprising Geo Geek is Michelle Brake. She is our Enterprise Solutions Specialist at Desert Canada and is joining us today from beautiful downtown Wolfville, Nova Scotia. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Mark. Hello, Maggie. Thanks for letting me join you and talk about all things ArcGIS Enterprise. Love it. Yeah, thanks so much for being here with us today, Michelle, on our, your first episode of the show. Since it's your first time as our Geo Geek, we want everybody to get a little, little knowledge about you and know about why you're our Enterprise Geo Geek. So, what is it that you love about ArcGIS Enterprise? The thing that I love about ArcGIS Enterprise is that you're able to do almost anything with it. The sky's the limit. It's open to any interpretation and your imagination for how far you want to take it. With ArcGIS Online, we have that as a platform, as a service, and that's great. Awesome. But Enterprise takes that a step further. You get full control over your infrastructure, over how you're going to deploy all of your machines. What are you going to do with extensions and how far you can take that? It just depends on what your organization's vision is. And that's really cool to see how those stories play out organization to organization. That is really cool about ArcGIS Enterprise. And it's a really exciting time because we have a new release of ArcGIS Enterprise. How exciting. 11.1 just came out. And I'm sure there's a lot of cool new features and enhancements that's been added in. So what are some of the highlights of uh, this version of Enterprise? Yeah, so a few things that we're looking at with this release. Um, service webhooks were introduced as beta functionality at 11.0, and they provide insight into your web services, help to simplify workflows, and allow for easier decision making within organizations. And 11.0, we saw that as beta. Now we're at 11.1. Now it's fully integrated. And as that core functionality with feature service webhooks, we're able to create, read, update, delete for different operations, for referenced and hosted services. And for geoprocessing services, webhooks are actually able to update you on job services for asynchronous status. Um, and it's really interesting with these together, you can further loop those in with different scripts or functionality that you're looking to use. So you can have a better idea of what's happening through your organization. And then another thing are custom data feeds, and these enable connections to new data sources not previously available in ArcGIS Enterprise without having to copy and format into an ArcGIS native format. Um, so rather than exposing your data to ArcGIS Enterprise within some sort of GIS format, now you don't have to actually register or physically transfer that data and users can actually configure custom data feeds to create read-only services for those custom data providers. Another kind of big thing, but is going to be happening behind the scenes, so not something that's going to be very flashy for the end user, is the .NET 6 ArcGIS Web Adapter update for Microsoft IIS users. And this is going to help modernize your enterprise system as the .NET 6 is Microsoft's latest version for their longer term support. And this transition to .NET 6 is better positioning ArcGIS Enterprise and Esri for future development enhancements that are going to keep us at the forefront of the software development community. And the main thing to know is that with the .NET 6, uh, you're going to have to have a few prerequisites installed before installing your ArcGIS web adapter for Microsoft IIS. And these are all going to be available within some of the documentation. You can go check out on the Esri support pages. Um, another great thing with all of these releases for ArcGIS Enterprise is that we see the map viewer usually getting a lot of functionality that we've seen over the past few updates in ArcGIS Online. And this release is going to include some added support for viewing related records and pop-ups, new clustering options for visualizing big data, and the ability to fil filter some multi-dimensional imagery layers. All of the great things that we've seen coming into ArcGIS Enterprise and you've had a chance to play with over there. And as always, there's plenty of other updates to applications and portal and server extensions. The list is endless. So make sure to check out the release notes or a recent blog post from Esri that'll highlight everything that's happening with this release. Well, lots of new stuff is coming. Great to hear about all of that. Um, you covered so much, but I know you briefly just mentioned some updates to extensions and other applications. I know there's too much for us to cover in just a quick conversation, but are there any standouts that our listeners should know about? Yeah, the biggest standout is actually going to be from ArcGIS Monitor, which just saw its release back in February. And at this release, it's the next generation is coming forward with the product. And this one is going to be version ArcGIS Monitor 
2023.0. And with this, we're seeing a redesigned user interface. We're also seeing installation support for Windows and Linux machines. Um, the internal repository is going to change from being MongoDB to PostgreSQL, which is pretty exciting. Um, as well, we're seeing a change in the version naming. So as we're looking through this, we're looking at what things are going to be compatible moving forward and backwards. So ArcGIS Monitor 2023 is going to be compatible with versions of ArcGIS Enterprise 10.6 and up to current versions. And for those that are new to Monitor, um, it helps you operate and manage ArcGIS Enterprise implementations, monitor your performance, your usage, their system health. And this allows you to collect data and information on your actual deployment and use that for collecting metrics to help make informed decision making in terms of resources, as well as helping stakeholders understand what is actually happening behind the scenes. Where should we be putting more resources? Where should we be focusing more time in terms of things that may be a potential issue? And that helps with your informed decision making for your backup planning, your upgrade planning, everything as a whole that you're looking at as an administrator. Um, just got a couple minutes left and I know the burning question for a lot of enterprise administrators is the upgrade process. So uh, for those who are planning their upgrade to 11.1, uh, do you have any good advice on how they should be preparing for this? Yeah, for sure. And with 11.0 and 11.1, we did see a lot of changes coming in where if you're an ArcMap user or you have ArcMap services still within your enterprise at 10.9.1, this is the time where you're going to have to start making some tough choices of if we're moving forward into 11.1, which is going to be our longer term release, we're switching to ArcGIS Pro only. And there are some tools that are included to help you identify what are those resources that currently exist using the ArcMap runtime. And at 10.9.1, that's where we saw some of these tools being introduced to help you make those changes already. So if you're at 10.9.1, great. You're already positioned well to start making those changes with your services, making sure everything's going to function as you move forward. If you're at an earlier version, going to 10.9.1 is going to be your best bet before taking that leap forward. Another thing that we want to make sure that people understand is as we go to the 11 series with these releases, there's also going to be some changing to your licensing, where previously we were able to use license files between, say, a 10.9 and a 10.9.1 deployment. Starting at 11.0 to 11.1, we will have to get new license files, and that's going to continue as we move forward. So just an extra thing that we'll have as a step moving forward. Yeah, that's a really good point. Don't forget those license files are pretty important. So make sure you have that in the back pocket. Michelle Brake, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to be our resident geo geek for anything enterprise. So you're going to be coming back to the podcast all the time to give us the latest scoop on what's going on in enterprise. So we appreciate your time today. Awesome. Thank you for having me. And I can't wait to see what we'll have next time for New Arctic Enterprise News. All right, Michelle Brake, she is our Enterprise Solutions Specialist, and she comes to us from Wolfville, Nova Scotia.